Ladies and gentlemen, mushroom stems are a great building block, but they're really annoying to get. My name is Sliced Lime, and today I'd like to share an automatic mushroom stem farm design I made on Season 3 of the Legacy SMP server. This design can be used fully automatic with two players or semi-automatic as a single player. When used in single player mode, it'll store up to 624 mushroom stem blocks that you can then mine. I'll first be going through an explanation of how to use the farm and how it works, then we'll be doing a block by block tutorial for how you can build it. The farm is based on red mushrooms and bone meal, and one thing you should know before building it is that while it's automatic, it does waste some bone meal. So if you don't have a solid income of bone meal, you might want to make sure to get that first or mine stems manually until you do. It also only works with red mushrooms, and it uses up way more than it replenishes, so you'll need to either gather up a bunch up front or make some small mushroom farm to provide them. Each red mushroom you use in the farm will give you four mushroom stem blocks. Using it is pretty simple. Dump all your bone meal into these chests at the back, put all your red mushrooms in this dropper or the hoppers leading into it except two. Keep at least two in a stack on your hotbar. Now stand on the carpet here and squeeze yourself up against the fence post. Flip the lever to start the farm, aim at the podzole and hold down the right mouse button. Every time the mushroom grows, the blocks are pushed out of the way which will make you plant a new one and the dropper will give you a replacement mushroom. This will keep going until either the farm is out of materials or if you're using it in single player mode until the stem block storage is entirely full with 624 mushroom blocks. Then you can turn the farm off and move over to the storage area. It'll now have a cuboid of 13 by 12 by 4 blocks that you can harvest, which will give you just shy of 10 stacks. If you want more, just start the farm back up the same way again. Also note that when the storage fills up, the farm stops. The dispenser keeps clicking, but doesn't actually use up any bone meal, so it's safe to leave it AFK even when it runs out. When this happens, you may have to manually mine the first row of blocks to make space for the next mushroom. To use the farm in two-player mode, one player opens this trapdoor and enters, then equips a silk touch axe, aims upwards and holds down the left mouse button. The other player operates the farm the same way as in single-player mode. The second player will now be immediately harvesting the blocks as they come out of the farm, which means the farm can run until it runs out of resources, or until the axe breaks. The reason this farm works and only works with red mushrooms is that red mushrooms can kind of grow through things and will not replace solid blocks when they do. That means that as long as there's only solid blocks where the mushroom will grow, we can make sure the farm stays intact. The mushroom also always grows to the same height, since the blocks above will block any attempts at growing a taller mushroom, which is also what makes the farm waste some bone meal compared to manual harvesting. In order for the next mushroom to grow, the top block needs to be clear, so a sticky piston pulls it out of the way. These cap blocks form a separate stream of blocks. The farm then pushes these streams of blocks away, the stem blocks into the storage area and the cap blocks into a blast chamber where we can get rid of them so they don't jam the farm. And also reclaim any dropped mushrooms back into the system. If you only ever intend to use it in single player, you can skip building the cubby hole for the second player. And if you only ever intend to use it with two players, you can skip building the storage pushers. There's also the option of whether to use TNT duping or not. I have both designs available, but I will warn you that the farm uses up quite a bit of TNT, so it might be expensive if you don't want to use the duper. I counted 48 TNT for a full run of the farm, filling up the storage entirely. Depending on which version of the farm you build, obviously the materials will differ. Most notably, if you build a TNT duping version, you'll need a coral fan and some slime blocks, and if you build the storage area, you'll need quite a few regular pistons. I'll try to make individual material lists for the various parts, so you can add it all up. Before we get into the build, let's talk about where to place it. My examples here are in a void world, but you can build it on the ground, in the air, or even underground like I did on Legacy SMP. For convenience when using the farm, the best thing to align with the ground level is the podsole block. One more thing before we dive into this, if you find farms like this useful, please go ahead and automatically hit the like button on the video. That helps the channel out in the YouTube algorithm game, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. Let's start building. Here's the material list for the main part of the build. I'm using quartz blocks and slabs here, but any solid blocks and slabs will work. The center of the farm is the podzole block, where we'll be placing our mushrooms, so let's start with that. Then we'll place two solid blocks out to the side of the entrance, with any type of wall on the first and the lever on the second. From this we'll go down two blocks, place a solid block, then go to the side one block and place a row of five solid blocks. Then we'll place redstone dust on all of these blocks and a solid block at the end of the redstone line. Next to this solid block, 
towards the center of the farm, we'll place a sticky piston facing up and on top of that an observer facing back towards the puzzle block. Let's go back to the block with the wall on top and place the dropper facing up next to it and the carpet on top of that. One block below the dropper, place a row of three solid blocks out like this. Then a staircase up two steps leading to a 2x3 platform like this. Also place two solid blocks in towards the farm at the near end of that platform like this. Now we'll lay down some redstone here, all the way from the dropper, up the staircase and to the end of the platform, as well as one dust up to the side. It'll look like it's going nowhere, don't worry about it, it will be powering a mushroom block when a mushroom grows. In front of these two solid blocks we'll build our four pistons all facing towards the pod soul. Place a target block behind the top one and make a redstone stair of top slabs leading up to it like this. Now use some temporary block to build up above the target block and place a solid block on top of that. Place another regular piston facing towards the pod's hole next to that above the other pistons. There should be a one block air gap here. Place an observer facing the pod's hole on top of the piston and redstone dust behind it. Finally, place a sticky piston facing down in front of the observer. Now let's go back to the target block. Build a staircase up three blocks towards the back of the farm, turn inwards and place two more blocks in a line. Place redstone going up all the way to the last block where we'll place a repeater on the three ticks. Next, place a temporary block and two solid blocks going in towards the piston, then a solid block in front of the repeater a redstone torch on the side of that, and a redstone dust leading to the sticky piston. If you've done everything right, the sticky piston should extend. Place a temporary block next to the extended piston arm, then an observer facing that temporary block. Place a regular piston next to the observer facing the same way, and a solid block behind the observer. Now we need to go back down, use a temporary block to build a solid block one lower behind the piston and then finally place a redstone dust on top of that block. Let's go back down and place two hoppers leading into the dropper right past the podzol under the pistons and then one to the side away from it all leading into one another. Place the composter on top of the middle one and a solid block on top of that. Place three solid blocks back from the composter. Next to the composter, place the dispenser pointing towards the pod sole, an observer pointing away from it, and two hoppers into the open side of it. Then turn and place one more hopper in from the back of the farm. This will be our bone meal input, place however many chests you want here. In this example I've used three double chests connected with hoppers. Make sure to not cover the front two hoppers. Any chests there can get replaced when a mushroom grows. Now, place two solid blocks on top of the new observer and then another observer in front of the top block facing in towards the farm. You might need to place a temporary block to get it to place correctly. Then place a block behind the lower solid block with a repeater on top, pointed away from the observer. Set the repeater to 4 ticks delay. Behind the lower blocks, place two solid blocks going off to the left with the redstone dust on top. then a sticky piston facing up with the block on top, then two more solid blocks with the repeater on one tick delay facing away from the piston, and redstone dust on the other block, which should now connect the first redstone line here. Fill in solid blocks back from the exposed hopper until you reach underneath the piston. Starting behind this block, build out a platform of 4 by 6 solid blocks to the right. Build a two tall wall on the left side of this, and then a one block tall wall the rest of the way around. At the other corner of the inner wall, build up the open two blocks, three blocks up, then place two more solid blocks that should end up over the top of the redstone dust there. Place another three solid blocks here, and in the very corner place an obsidian block. Build out with obsidian six blocks, one block below this obsidian block. You should be building with a two block air gap right above the previous wall. At the end of this, place down a temporary block, then build up obsidian walls two high outwards and back all the way towards the first obsidian you placed. Now place a row of temporary blocks so it makes a tray. 
Then place a trapdoor of any wood type at the far back, angled up towards the long side. Waterlog this trapdoor, let the water flow all the way through the tray, then remove the temporary blocks to let the water flow down. Go back down and place another water source in the outer corner. You should now have a water flowing under the piston all the way to the hopper. Go back up, place a temporary block next to the obsidian closest to the chests, and an observer on top of that facing towards the water. Place another solid block against the temporary block behind the observer. From this we're going to place another block, then a temporary block with a solid block on top of it, then another solid block, a sticky piston facing upwards with a block on top of it, another solid block, and then another temporary block with a block on top of it. Place a repeater on one tick facing into the block above the piston and redstone dust on all the other blocks on the same level. Now place two solid blocks out from the side of the piston. Then turn and place one solid block towards the front of the farm. Place dust on the first two, then a repeater pointing away from the dust on the last one set to one tick. Now place a sticky piston on the front of that repeater pointing towards the obsidian. Go back to the last temporary block at the back of the line, build out one solid block from that and then a 3x2 platform like this. Place another block out from the far block of the platform. Place a repeater on four ticks facing away from the obsidian. Then two redstone dust on the two blocks right in front of that. Now we'll place down our comparators, two facing away from the obsidian on the side of the repeater and two facing towards the obsidian next to them. Place a temporary block in the gap of the platform and a solid block on top of that, then place a redstone dust on top of the last empty block. Now place a block out from that temporary block, then a 3x2 platform in front of that, and one last block to the right of it, connecting it to the piston. Place down a repeater coming out of the block from the comparators, then two redstone dust in front of that, and two repeaters in front of that. Place a redstone dust in the corner and next to the piston, and a final repeater pointed towards the piston in the last available space. Your circuit should now look like this, and all these repeaters should be left at one tick delay. We're now done with the common part of the build. Depending on your needs, you'll now need to build one of the TNT dispenser versions and at least one of the two-player harvesting station and the block storage. Let's start with a non-duping TNT dispenser since it's the simplest. Feel free to skip this part if you're building the duping version. On top of the obsidian with the trapdoor on it, place two more obsidian upwards and a dispenser facing the water. Place temporary blocks in front of all these three blocks and build a ring of obsidian around all three blocks. Don't forget to remove the temporary blocks when you're done. Behind the dispenser, place two top slabs to create a redstone staircase like this and place redstone dust on top of them. That's it for this version, but you'll also need to stock this dispenser with TNT. If you're installed building the TNT duping setup, start by filling in obsidian in the corner of the two existing row. Now build the four last blocks in this corner up three blocks using obsidian. Build back three steps using top slabs from these top edges and fill in the resulting square. You should end up with a 5x5 platform with an obsidian corner and a one block hole. On top of the obsidian closest to the farm, place another obsidian and make an edge going out around the hole in the square. Five obsidian blocks in total. Fill in the rest of the wall around the entire place with top slabs. You should now have a full wall around the platform if we ignore the gaps under the slabs. Place a temporary block one block away from the far corner and use it to place a water source. Don't place the water right on the floor, that would just waterlog the slab. Remove the temporary block and you should now have water that reaches all the way to the gap, but not into it. From the obsidian block where you started building the corner, build three temporary blocks up. In front of the top block, place a wall, then a fence gate, and then another wall on the other side. Open the fence gate. Place a TNT block on the first wall. Keep in mind that doing the wrong thing from now on might prime this TNT, so be sure you're following the instructions exactly. 
Looking at the TNT block from the side of the farm center, place a slime block on its left side, then another slime block on top of that, and one towards the center of the farm. Place the dead coral fan on the side of the slime block so it ends up in front of the TNT. Now place a slime block on top of the TNT, then back from that and up by one. Place another wall on the opposite side of the slime block on top of the TNT. Now place two temporary blocks out from the topmost slime block back towards the farm and remove the one next to the slime. Place a sticky piston here instead, facing the slime blocks. The duper is now almost done. Now we need to arm it. It's very important that we do this in the right way, as otherwise the TNT might end up blowing the whole setup up. Find the slime block on top of the TNT. Now move one block over to the slime block next to it on the same level. Place a temporary block on the side of the slime block away from the TNT and a temporary piston on top of that facing towards the TNT. Place a lever on the side of that temporary block. Now place your detector rail on top of the slime block next to the piston and the minecart on top of that. Make sure you're not in the way and flip the lever. The rail and cart should both now move over to the other slime block and the mechanism is armed. Remove the temporary block and piston. The last thing to do is to connect it up. We'll do this with a slab staircase from the back end of the farm. Starting behind the obsidian wall, make top slabs back one step and then upwards towards the center of the farm until you've reached the end of the water platform. From there, go straight up, alternating back and forth in the same direction you came from until you reach the height just below the piston. Place another slab there and a repeater on top pointing into the piston at 2 ticks delay, then redstone dust all the way down to connect the circuit. We're done with the TNT dispenser. If you want to try it out, go down and place a block in front of the observer on the obsidian. A TNT should end up being dispensed, blow up and then the whole circuit should reset itself. Next, let's build the harvesting station. This is a pretty quick and simple thing. At the very bottom of the farm, where there is a 5 block redstone line, place a temporary block away from the middle of those 5 blocks, and then a double chest away from that. Point one hopper into the far side of the chest, and one into the top of the far block. Place a temporary block in between these two hoppers, and surround that temporary block with solid blocks. Remove the temporary block and place a ladder on the side of one of the solid blocks inside the hole. Place another hopper on top of the top one, then make a ring of hoppers all leading into that one. Finally, place a trapdoor on the same side as the ladder. And you're done! Now finally for our block storage, we'll start by counting out 12 temporary blocks from on top of the pod sole. At block 12, place another temporary block underneath and then a solid block. Now place an angle of three solid blocks like this, and then we can remove all the temporary blocks. Place a redstone torch on the bottom block, a repeater pointing away from the torch on the next block over on one tick, and redstone dust on the remaining two blocks. In the center of the angle, place five new temporary blocks in a stack upwards. Place four regular pistons on the side of the top four of these blocks, and the top slab out from the middle one. Now remove all the temporary blocks and place two more top slabs to form a redstone staircase up the side of the pistons. If you've done this part right, placing a block on top of the redstone torch should make the pistons immediately push that block out of the way. From the bottom solid blocks, place 11 temporary blocks going out in the direction the pistons are facing, then place a solid block at the end of the line. Place a temporary block on top of this and a solid block on the side of that, turn and place another solid block back in the direction of the farm. Now we'll place another redstone torch on top of the bottom block, a redstone dust on the next block over, and a repeater on one tick on the last block. At the side of this repeater, we're going to place a wall of pistons. They'll all be facing the opposite way of that repeater, and the wall will be 12 blocks wide and 4 blocks tall. Place another solid block in front of the repeater with a redstone dust on top, then turn in behind the pistons and place a row of solid blocks one block up from that, covering the entire wall. This row of blocks should be behind the second row of pistons from the bottom. Now place dust on top of the entire row. Place another row of solid blocks behind the top row of pistons and again cover them with dust.
Finally, we need to connect the two using a redstone staircase of two slabs going out one block to the back of the pistons, like this. To test a build, place a block on top of the redstone torch. This should make the entire wall of pistons fire at once. And you should now have a fully working mushroom stem farm. Enjoy! If you want this world as a download, look for a link in the description. Thank you for watching, my name is Sliced Lime, and I'll see you later.